Roger kindly sent me this paper to try. So it says here watercolor block, premium 50% cotton paper. It's acid free, 300 grams, cold pressed, vegan friendly. And the sizing is 20.3 centimeters or eight inches. It's a square and it's got 20 sheets in here. I haven't tried the etcher paper before but I have heard loads of good things so I am quite excited. So here is what it looks like. Texture is lovely. So what's interesting is that the paper is sealed only on one side. So it's not sealed on here. And neither is it sealed on here. Well, technically on both sides. So the side that the paper comes out of and the other end of it. So that's new to me. Usually they're sealed on all four sides and there's just a little gap somewhere left that's unsealed where you can get your palette knife in to release the paper. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to paint one of my crystals and I have quite a few. So the question is which one to paint? Okay, so the one that I feel like painting is a mazonite. And it's got beautiful little pattern. I'm just going to grab what's closest to me. Um, and it happens to be this Roman Schmal watercolor palette. Okay, so I'm going to try and mix up a colour. Just a base colour to begin with. So. the uh, the water goes into the paper very quickly it kind of reminds me of arches so you have to very limited time to work with it or you would have to have a very big wet brush I have taken a small brush here because I want to create the pattern on the pebble. And I'm just going to neutralize it ever so slightly. by adding some pink and I'm just going to add a little bit of texture because the paper is still wet we have a bit of a spread here And then we've got hematite, violet shade. This is a really interesting color. 
I'll just mix it straight into my mix. And that will be our beige color. And then I'm thinking of glazing a little bit, just to make it a bit more sphere-like. And to do that, I'm just going to add a bit of wet paint. There we go, and then I'll add a little bit more darker color. So although it doesn't stay wet, what does happen is that it does allow you to still keep on kind of adding your glazing which I think is quite nice Okay, so at this point I would wait for it to dry just a little bit more before before adding the detail on the speckles. I'm going to take inspiration from the Amazonite here, but I'm not going to, um, you know, create an identical copy here. I want to take the colors that I like and be inspired by it. So... I'm going to take a, um, a brush with fine point and this is A30 spreads a little bit too much still so I'm just gonna add a few larger spreads or dots and then I will wait for it to dry 
and do the little ones. So a bit of one dike with a little bit of pink in there. And a touch of blue. To neutralize it. I wanted to get close to a black, but I'm quite impressed that the uh, spread is easy to achieve even though you don't get that gloss on the paper from a wet um, from the wet paint and it kind of makes you think like that it might be too dry and the pigment won't flow but it does flow, so that's quite nice. I'm just trying to think now to mix up a neutral black. So for that I need three primaries to do that with but I can't seem to get a good primary or a neutral rather here we go, I need some more pink <coughs> All right, that will do. Okay, so now there's hardly any spread and that means we can now add the darker elements and they will stay. So now I'm just adding bigger, bigger spots. So this is where I kind of would want to add enough to make it uh, quite characterful and uh, resemble the true nature of a Mazenite, but I wouldn't want to overdo it. Just enough to be able to tell that these spots are a Mazenite.
so that's it I think of course um, you could add some more detail with pencils and go in and kind of do a bit of shading but I think I'm quite happy with just leaving it purely watercolor today and that is my amazonite I will wait for it to dry fully and then come back so I couldn't resist to pull out my little sketchbook that I started um, when I was doing the Daniel Smith Genuine series, kind of taking a look at them closer and then the, um, the scandal broke out. So yeah, um, Amazonite Genuine, does this look? Like it could come from a from a stone like this. <laughs> anyway, um, since then, I mean, you can see the date here, fourteenth of April, two thousand twenty-one. It's over a year, and since then, I have actually been into crystal and stones, and kind of you know learning things about them. So I thought it'd be interesting to show you what um, what the genuine uh, or so-called genuine watercolors look next to the real Amazonite okay so it might be actually a good idea to resume this uh, this series let me know what you think in the comments uh, but if I wanted to paint a genuine Amazonite, I surely would not be doing it with the <laughs> with the um, Daniel Smith genuine Amazonite, which doesn't seem to be looking anything like the real thing. So I hope you enjoyed this. Let me know what you think about me painting my newfound passion for crystals and stones and jemmy jemmy <laughs> semi precious gemstones so things are almost dry and i just wanted to give you a nice close-up to show you the color comparison and the textures Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.